Welcome to LG Ministry. We're glad you have chosen to watch our program. My name is Coogan Collins, and I'm the minister at the Long Grove Church of Christ. Our hope and desire is that you will open up your Bible and study along with us. Be sure to check out all of our lessons on YouTube. Now let's get to our lesson. As one person rightly said, procrastination never won a race, received a promotion, or changed the outcome of any situation. There is little to no value to procrastination, yet everybody does it from time to time. So the first thing I want to talk about is procrastination in our everyday lives. I will be the first to admit that I have been guilty of procrastination several times. In fact, there are still things I need to do to my house that I have put off for almost 20 years. Of course, none of these things I've put off are really all that important, but they still haven't been done. This reminds me of a saying I saw in a meme which says, Ladies, if a man says he'll do something, he'll do it. No need to remind him about it every six months. I would imagine that just about everybody has something they have been meaning to do for years, but they haven't done it yet because of procrastination. For example, some of us put off going to the doctor when we should, whether it be for a regular checkup or for pain that we're having. Many of us plan to build things or go to certain places, but we always manage to find a reason not to do them. Sometimes we suffer great heartache because of procrastination. For example, some have wanted to tell their mother, father, or someone close to them how much they loved them and appreciated them, but they waited too long and the person died before they had a chance. Sometimes we get angry at a friend or a loved one and one day, we realize that it's not worth staying angry over whatever that was. But because we procrastinated and put off reconciliation, that friend or loved one died. And then we feel horrible because they went to their grave thinking we were still angry at them. Procrastination has always been a problem with people. And in some instances, it has cost people their lives. Think about this for a minute. How many of us would want our firefighters to procrastinate when our house is in danger of catching fire from a nearby grass fire? How many of us would want an ambulance driver to procrastinate on getting to our home while our loved one is suffering from a heart attack? How many of us would want a police officer to procrastinate on responding to a prowler trying to break into our homes? Of course, all of us would say, no, I wouldn't want them to procrastinate. Yet, that is exactly what we do over and over again. Procrastination is our enemy, and if we ever want to get anything done in this life, we have to learn to avoid procrastination. One sneaky way that procrastination works in our lives is that we fool ourselves into thinking that because we keep busy every day that we are being productive. However, a person needs to examine what they are busy doing and consider if what they are doing is really that important. For example, some people become workaholics and they stay busy every day which leaves them no time to do the things they should be doing, like spending precious time with their spouses and their kids. They have little time on their hands to study their Bibles or to reach out to the lost. Even though these workaholics are busy, they are procrastinating because they are neglecting those things which are more important in life. I think it's imperative that we sit down in a quiet spot from time to time and make a list mentally or on paper of what our priorities should be and then compare it to what we are making our priorities in our life right now. If our current priorities do not match up with what we know our priorities should be, then we need to make some real changes in our lives and not procrastinate in doing uh, these things before it's too late. Since it's important that we not procrastinate, I want to share with you some good points I read in an article that I found at solvingprocrastination.com. 
I believe these things will help you to not procrastinate. You start by establishing your goals. When doing this, make sure you define your goals as clearly as possible and make sure that these goals are significant enough and that they will allow you to make many meaningful progress while also being possible for you to accomplish in reality. Next, you need to figure out exactly the nature of your procrastination problem. You can do this by thinking about cases where you procrastinated and then identifying when and how and why you did so. Then create a plan of action. This plan should involve a combination of relevant anti-procrastination techniques that will allow you to deal with the situation that you're procrastinating with. Here are some anti-procrastination techniques that you can use. Prioritize tasks based on how important they are. Break large and overwhelming tasks into small and actionable pieces. Get started on tasks by committing to only work on them for a few minutes. Remove distractions from your work environment. Identify when you're most and least productive and schedule your task accordingly. Set intermediate deadlines for yourself on your way to your final goals. Create a daily goal and mark streaks of days on which you successfully achieved it. Reward yourself when you successfully implement your plan of action. Focus on your goals instead of on the task that you have to complete. Visualize your future self-experiencing the outcomes of your work. Avoid a perfectionist mindset by accepting that your work will have some flaws. Develop a belief in your ability to successfully overcome your procrastination. Finally, implement your plan of action. As time goes by, make sure to monitor your progress and refine this plan by modifying or dropping anti-procrastination techniques based on how well they work for you and by ad adding new ones if you think they could help. So far, we have examined procrastination in our everyday lives. Now I want to turn our attention to the dangers of procrastination in our Christian lives and what the Bible has to say about it. Just as we procrastinate in our everyday lives with common things, we have a tendency to procrastinate in our spiritual lives as well. The first century Christians had this problem as well. For example, in 2 Corinthians 8, Paul does his best to encourage the congregation at Corinth to stop procrastinating. Notice what he tells them in 2 Corinthians 8, starting at verse 10. And in this I give advice, as it is to your advantage not only to be doing what you began and were desiring to do a year ago, but now you also must complete the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to desire it, so there also may be a completion out of what you have. For if there is first a willing mind, it is accepted according to what one has and not according to what he does not have. In context, Paul is talking about them taking up a collection for their brethren that needed it. They had promised to do this a year ago, but they still hadn't done it. And Paul is encouraging them to complete what they started. The key to doing this is found in verse 12, which says they first must have a willing mind. If this church had a willing mind to do what they said they would do, then it would have already been done. The same thing happens in congregations today. They plan on doing this or that, but it ends up being a bunch of empty talk because none of their plans ever get implemented. This type of procrastination can be dangerous because it breeds a sense of laziness and once a church adapts this way of thinking, nothing will ever happen because no one will have a willing mind to do anything. So as a congregation, we should avoid putting off those things we would like to accomplish. There are also many other areas that we procrastinate in as individual Christians. Think about how many times we procrastinate in showing love for one another. How many times have we thought to ourselves, well, I'm going to do such and such for brother or sister so and so, but we keep putting it off? Or how many times have we told ourselves, I'm going to get to know that Christian better, but again, we put it off. When we procrastinate at showing love for our fellow brethren, we miss great opportunity to encourage and lift them up. Putting off what you intend to do today or this week weakens the body of Christ. Notice what Hebrews 3 verse 12 says, Beware, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. 
but exhort one another daily while it is called a day, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. The writer expresses the importance of taking care of business today and not tomorrow. We have to realize that tomorrow may never come, as James says, James 4 verse 13. Come now, you say, today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell, and make a profit, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. We must train ourselves to have a willing mind to do what needs to be done today so that we can show our love towards our brethren. This same concept applies to reaching out to the lost. Jesus said in Matthew 28, 19, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. There is no room for procrastination in the word go. One of our main purposes as Christians is to try and lead others to Christ and we do this by our words and our deeds. As Jesus says in Matthew 5, verse 16, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Unfortunately, we procrastinate in this area. How many opportunities have we wasted to tell someone about God because we convinced ourselves that we would talk to them another day? I personally know of several people that I wished I had talked to over the years but now it's too late because they have already passed away. Procrastinating in this area is very dangerous for those around us because what we might have said or done could have possibly made the difference between that person being lost or saved. I know it's difficult for us to muster up the courage to talk to people, but we have to learn to overcome that fear because their souls are at stake. Notice what Paul says about this. In 2 Corinthians 5, verse 11, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Paul didn't want anyone to have to face the wrath of God, so he always did his best to tell everyone about God and what happens if you do not accept Him. He expresses this to the Ephesian elders in Acts 20, verse 26. Therefore I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. It is imperative that we learn to be like Paul in this instance and make sure we teach all the truth and not just part of it. Not only must we teach it, we must live it. We cannot successfully lead people to Christ if we procrastinate when it comes to our example. People are always watching us, so we have to be careful and make sure that we live by what we teach. Notice what Paul says about this in Philippians 2, verse 14. Do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I may not run in vain or labor in vain. Another area that we procrastinate in is found in Galatians 6, and verse number 1. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. When someone falls away from the Lord, we are supposed to jump into action and do what we can to restore them. However, many times we fail to act and instead we put it off and we simply make plans about talking to this person. This should not be the case because the longer we wait, the further they are going to drift away. It can get to the point where we will never be able to reach them again. I know it can be scary talking to those who have fallen away, but we must try because God wants them to come back home so they can be restored to His fold. Another area we procrastinate in is our prayer lives, and this can become very dangerous, as Jesus says in Matthew 26, verse 41. Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. When we procrastinate in our prayer life, we are opening ourselves up to temptation and we will find ourselves growing further and further away from God. It's a real shame when we get to the point in our lives when we can't find the time to talk to God. When we fail to pray as we should, we show a lack of trust and a lack of love toward our Father in heaven. 
We need all the help we can get to deal with the problems that life throws our way. So let us never procrastinate in our prayer life. Procrastination can be very dangerous for a Christian because it can make the difference between us making it to heaven or spending eternity in hell. Jesus makes this clear in Matthew 24, verse 46. Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, My master is delaying his coming, and begins to beat his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him, and an hour that he is not aware of, and will cut him in two, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus is talking about his second coming, and he's saying that when he comes, those who are serving him will be rewarded, but those who are procrastinating because they think they have plenty of time are going to be treated like the hypocrite who will be cast into the fiery lake. Jesus reemphasizes this same concept in the next chapter with the parable of the ten virgins and the parable of the talents. So let us always strive not to procrastinate in our Christianity or it could lead us to spiritual death. Our third and final point has to do with how some play the dangerous game of procrastination when it comes to obeying the gospel and becoming a Christian. Too many people have the attitude of Felix, as we read in Acts 24, verse 24. And after some days, when Felix came with his wife Drusilla, who was Jewish, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. Now as he reasoned about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was afraid and answered, Go away for now. When I have a convenient time, I will call for you. Felix was interested in hearing about Jesus because of Paul's faith in him. But as soon as Paul started talking about how a person must live a righteous life and exercise self-control, this was beginning to seem like too much trouble to Felix. Then when Paul started teaching him about what will happen at the final judgment day, it scares Felix and he doesn't want to think about such things, nor does he want to make any changes in his lifestyle. So he procrastinates, and as far as we know, he never became a Christian. This is the typical attitude of many sinners today. They want to put off obeying the gospel because they are not ready to make that kind of commitment. They don't want to know about the details. They just want to think that there's a loving God who will save them no matter what. But this simply is not the case. One thing we as humans are great at is making excuses for why we shouldn't obey God today. In fact, this is illustrated by Jesus with the parable in Luke 14, verse 15. Now, when one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then he said to him, A certain man gave a great supper and invited many, and sent his servants at supper times to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. But they all with one accord began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I am going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. Still another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city, and bring in here the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you commanded, and still there is room. Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say to you that none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. From this parable, we can see that some who were invited to accept God's saving grace will make up all kinds of excuses for why they cannot accept His grace. Then it talks about those who were invited that did accept it. They were allowed the privilege to dine with the Master and those who chose of their own free will to pro procrastinate will never ever be allowed to taste the Master's Supper. Does this apply to you? Have you been putting off becoming a Christian because you're not ready to make the commitment to serve God with your whole mind, heart, and soul? Don't you think it's time that you stop gambling with your soul and thinking that you will always have tomorrow? 
Peter tells us in 2 Peter 1 verse 10, Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly to the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Paul also stresses the importance of obeying the gospel call today. In 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 2, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Our duty as Christians is to help the lost understand that putting off obeying the gospel will cost them their souls. If someone is listening to this message and has been making excuses for obeying the gospel or has been making excuses for living for God, why not stop procrastinating today? Today could be your last opportunity to take care of business before it's too late. Stop putting off what needs to be done today. We should all make procrastination our enemy, especially when it comes to our spiritual lives. If you are already a Christian, but have been procrastinating and living the Christian life and reaching out to others, make the decision today to change your ways and to do your duty as a Christian. Or if you have never obeyed the gospel, why not be saved today? As Ananias told Paul in Acts 22 verse 16, And now why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Hope you found this lesson helpful. No matter what lesson I preach, I want you to test what I say or any person says about God's Word by comparing what is being said to the Bible. Don't ever be lazy in this area because it is too important to simply trust in what a man is saying because we are all human and we're capable of being wrong. One thing we know for sure is that God's Word will not lead us astray, so we can always trust in it. As Psalm 146.3 says, Do not put your trust in princes, nor in a son of man, in whom there is no help. Psalm 18 verse 30, As for God, His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in Him. I will always do my best to preach the truth, but I hope if you catch me teaching error that you will contact me so that we can discuss the matter. If you would like to learn more about LG Ministry and the congregation I preach at, feel free to visit our website at lgchurchofchrist.com. On our website, you will find a lot of material that can help you with your spiritual growth. On our main page, you will find an online correspondence course that you can take that will walk you through the basics. On our sermon page, you will find just about every sermon I've preached at my local congregation. You will also find some audio sermons and Bible class materials that you are free to study and use. On our article page, you will find tracts that you can read and print off and articles that have been written for our local paper. Finally, on our video page, you'll find our new video lessons like the one that you're watching now. I know we live in a fast-paced world where it seems like we don't have time to do much of anything. But I want to encourage you to find time out of each day to sit down and to study God's Word. Life is great and there's nothing wrong with being busy. But we must be careful that we don't get to the point where we get so busy that we fail to take time to feed ourselves spiritually from God's Word. We must remember that God is supposed to be our number one priority. If you find my lessons to be helpful, be sure and tell people about our program so that others can hear sound lessons from the Bible. I hope you have a blessed day.